Hi everyone. Some of my students had asked a very interesting question on uh, an inverting operational amplifier based circuit which is shown here a few weeks ago. So I thought I'll share that with you guys in a small video. But before you uh, have a look at this circuit, I'd recommend you watch the previous lectures on how to analyze op amp circuits intuitively. Otherwise, you might find that the analysis is a bit analysis is a bit fast for you to follow so shown here is a simple inverting operational amplifier based circuit the only difference here is that we have inserted a resistor r between the op amps output and the actual load output uh, the load output voltage now we will see what impact does this have so you are supposed to find the voltage gain of the circuit v0 upon vi for two conditions, I am going to vary the load. Uh, initially, it's going to be equal to R, and it's after the in the second case, it's going to be R by two, and we are supposed to find the voltage gain of the circuit, which is the V naught upon V i. And then we'll also have to find what is the op amp current, the current that the op amp has to supply in both these cases when R L is R and when R L is R by two, and also the internal load, so which is the op amp's output voltage, what will be its value? when RL is R and RL is R by 2 and finally we have to estimate the output resistance of the circuit as a function of the load resistance. So if your load resistance changes what will be the output resistance of the circuit. The given assumption is that this op amp here is an ideal op amp. Okay, The gain is infinity so that is the assumption that is given in the circuit. So let us analyze the gain part first. So first I will simplify the circuit. So at the non-inverting terminal, there was a resistor to ground. Now since we said this is an ideal op amp with an infinite gain, since the gain for the circuit is infinity and the input impedance is zero, uh, infinite input impedance is infinity as well. So which means there will be no current drawn at the input. So since no current is drawn at the input, the voltage drop across the resistor is zero. So I will just short it out. Now one look at the circuit and you can immediately see that it is a negative feedback circuit. right? So you just have, uh, you can just break the loop at any point and you can just traverse the loop and immediately see that the loop gain is negative. So the moment you know it is a negative feedback circuit, we have already discussed uh, the op amp is like an error amplifier with an infinite gain and if the gain is infinity, uh, the positive and negative terminal should track each other and therefore your the, the negative terminal of the op amp will be equal to ground will, will be ground that is the virtual ground. So you can immediately analyze the circuit uh, the current flowing through this resistance R is V i by R and that current has no other path but to flow through this resistor because the input current here is 0. So all the current will flow through this resistor. So the current through resistor is V i by R. Now the voltage at this node is 0. And you also know because the current through the resistor is fixed, the voltage across the resistor is also fixed. The voltage across the resistor is Vi. But since this node voltage is set to 0 by virtue of feedback, I can directly write the output node voltage is simply minus Vi. So this node voltage which happens to be the output or the load voltage which will be minus Vi. So the voltage gain V0 by Vi is minus 1. Now if you see the circuit we did not even bring the load resistance into the picture. I mean, so it's, it's really independent of the load resistance. Whatever be this load resistance, uh, R the in this I've shown it as R here. But whatever be the value of the load resistance, the voltage output voltage is always going to be equal to minus V i. So the gain, which is minus one, is independent of the load resistance. It's same for the case when R L equals R and R L equals R by two. The difference, however, will be in the currents or the current supplied by the op amp and the in op amp's internal node voltage. So that we will see in the next part of the question. So here I have again removed the resistor here, I have simplified the circuit. So our goal is to find out what is the op amp's node voltage at this point and also what is the current supplied by the op amp. So since I have shorted this, we can we have already analyzed this circuit. So the current which is flowing through this resistor which comes from the input with simply Vi by R. 
and the output node voltage is minus vi that is independent of what rl is so i'll simply call this as rl and the current at the output it's going to flow from ground to the output node so i, I can the current flowing through the load resistance rl is minus of vi by rl that will flow in this direction or i can simply reverse the direction and change its polarity and show it this way so you have a load current i l flowing in this direction so let me call this current as i x and this current as i l the both these currents has to be supplied by the op amp so if you apply kirchhoff's current law at this node you can see that current has to flow through the op amp so your i op amp in this case is i x plus i l now for this specific example when r l equal to r it it turns out to be two times v i by r so you have v i by r current flowing through this load v i by r current coming here so the total current flowing into the op amp is 2 v x by r so that's the current the op amp has to supply now if you see this current this 2 v x by 2 v i by r sorry 2 v i by r current is independent of this resistor it has no dependence on this resistor the output resistance you have connected at the output terminal okay it has no dependence that will always be the same um, so the current that the op amp has to supply in an inverting amplifier will normally be vi by r which is the when i say vi by r it's a current that's determined by the input so that's the current which is drawn from the input and all that current if i call vi by r as i i okay i've called it i x but it's a bad notation so i'll call it i i as the input current current which is drawn from the input and the current that is drawn from the load both has to come from the op amp okay so both will actually be drawn from the op amp and both both of these currents are independent of what you connect at the op amp's output okay so if you know this node voltage here is minus vi and the current flowing through this resistor is 2 vi by r so the voltage drop across this resistor will be 2 vi so the op amp's output node v op amp will be equal to minus of 3 vi so this is for the case when r l is r so the output node voltage will be 3 vi the op amp's output will be 3 vi minus 3 vi now for the second case when i change r l to r by 2 we'll see what happens the output of the op amp so v op amp in this example if you see is simply v not the output node voltage minus the current that's going to flow i l plus i i times r so this is your op amp's voltage now when i change my r l to r by 2 the op amp's gain will remain the same which is what we discussed so v not will stay at minus v i but the currents will change so the load current previously was just vi by r now it's going to be vi by r by 2 which is 2 times vi by r so since rl is r by 2 your current is now going to become 2 times vi by r so i'm just going to show it here so i've just drawn a part of the circuit here so you have a current of value 2 vi by r flowing from ground into the output node and this current here is vi by r so the total current flowing through this resistor at the output of the op amp will be 3 vi by r so 2 plus 1 uh, vi by r which will be 3 vi by r and the voltage drop across the resistor will be 3 vi so the op amp's output node voltage will be minus vi minus 3 vi so it will be minus 4 vi so now if you see even if you change your load resistance the output gain remains the same but both the op amp's current the current the op amp has to supply increases i mean or increases or decreases depending on the load in this example when load has reduced the current that the op amp has to supply has increased and the op amp's output node voltage also changes so that is also a function of the load but the overall output voltage v not is independent of the load resistance at the output Finally, we will analyze what is the output resistance of an inverting amplifier circuit with a load resistance connected in with the load resistance in place. What will happen? What will be the expression for the output impedance? 
so i'll simplify the circuit so when you are finding output impedance uh, we short the uh, input as well so the circuit reduces to something like this so this is the circuit for which we are supposed to find the output impedance now when you find output impedance so especially when you're analyzing circuits in, uh, of course you can do a brute force analysis as well but if you are going to analyze the circuit intuitively there are two ways of finding output impedance you first inject a current at this node and monitor the voltage and then take the ratio of voltage to current you get the impedance or you can just apply a see when you are finding impedance is between two nodes it's impedance between the output with respect to ground so i'm going to yank this node voltage by delta v and observe the current that's drawn from this uh, uh, current drawn by this circuit from this node okay i'm going to apply a voltage so for, as far as this output node is concerned this entire block uh, it will look like a black box where i'm applying a voltage and trying to monitor the current that's drawn out of the circuit now first if you look at the circuit when you we'll find we'll take the second approach uh, you, you can easily do it using in either of the approaches but we'll start with the second approach let's say i apply a test voltage vt at this node now you should see what are the paths for the current there are three paths for the current to the circuit one path is through this resistor to the ground the other path is of course to the load resistance itself rl the third path is through the op amp so there are three paths for current here okay they may be dependent um, the currents may be dependent so for example the current in this path uh, might have a dependence on the current flowing through the op amp but we'll ignore that for the time being we'll just see that there are three paths here and we'll see intuitively what are the currents in the three paths you have to keep in mind the loop gain of the op amp the gain of the op amp is infinity so if you apply a voltage vt the test voltage vt at this node we can directly apply since i mean from kirchhoff's current and voltage laws you can directly show that this node it will try to push it to vt by 2 it will try to push this node to vt by 2 okay and immediately you can see if this node goes to vt by 2 this is going to be amplified by a huge value so this node will be a times minus vt by 2 and this resistor so i'll assume for all practical purposes you can assume this is an infinite voltage let's call it minus infinity which is a huge negative voltage so immediately there will be an infinite current flowing through this resistor you can intuitively see that there will be an um, infinite current which is going to flow through this resistor the current in this path in this path if you apply a test voltage is simply vx by uh, vt by 2r because they both are in series so that's the only path for current and the voltage across both this will be vt by 2r so we can say that okay or so that current will be vt by 2r and the current flowing through the load resistance will be vt by rl but the current flowing through this node here the current flowing through this resistor here will be infinity so which means you will see three parallel paths you will see three parallel paths here one path through rl one path through this guy and the third path through the op amp okay but since uh, the op amp's gain is infinity and all that since the op amp's gain is significantly higher uh, if the op amp's gain is infinity we can directly say that we can immediately say that uh, in this the current drawn from uh, sorry the current drawn through the resistor is infinity so there are three paths so there is one path through the resistor um, i'm sorry for that so so there are three paths there are there is one path through the resistor rl which is a finite current this current which is going through the op amp is infinity and there is another path through the two resistors which is also finite which is vt by 2r now this is equivalent to connecting three resistors in parallel so there are three current paths so the total current drawn here will be infinity you have applied a finite voltage vt is a finite voltage but the current drawn is infinity so the impedance will be zero so you can directly say the impedance seen at the output node will be zero 
the other way to analyze this is we'll use a current source we'll inject a current and see what happens to the output node now before uh, as i said we'll try to intuitively analyze the circuit i'm going to inject a current it a test current and measure the voltage at this node now even before you analyze the circuit analyze the circuit immediately you'll have to you have to observe that the input voltage is zero if you recollect one very interesting point we discussed in the beginning of when we analyzed the circuit was that the output node voltage at this point was not dependent on the load here that value was always equal to minus vi it's it's a function of the input voltage it did not depend on the load current whatever be the load current was whatever be the value of the load current we were always seeing the output voltage to be equal to minus vi so immediately i can say even though i'm injecting a current since vi is zero so this node voltage will be zero even though i'm applying even though i'm applying a current at this node even though i'm applying a current a finite current at this node the voltage developed here will be zero okay so i can directly use this uh, result from one of uh, from the one of the first parts of the question and directly see that whatever be the current here this node voltage is not going to depend on the current here because the input is zero so this node voltage will also be zero so whatever be the value of this current it the op amp will absorb that current and maintain this node voltage at zero so that you can directly say you applied a current it let's call the impedance as r you have getting it as zero so even then you can say for a finite it the voltage is zero so therefore the resistance output resistance is zero so that's it so it's a very interesting question um it's just adding an finite output resistance to an ideal op amp so i've already discussed a circuit a similar circuit long back on uh, the operational amplifiers so just to quickly revise that point so if you take an ideal op amp with an infinite gain and connect and an entity and even as if the gain of this op amp is infinity even if it has a finite input resistance and a finite output resistance when used in negative feedback when used in negative feedback because of the fact that the gain is infinity it will behave like an ideal op amp the input impedance will look like infinity output impedance will look like zero it will still behave like an ideal op amp so that's what uh, this question was driving it I thought it was an inter interesting question, so uh, I made a small video on that. Thank you.